Chapter 5 530. The wind was still howling. We could hear the porch swing pounding on the side of the house. Something like a tree branch hit the cellar doors. Pete said, Ah, uh, one more quick story about tornado. Not too quick. I said, I like all the details. I think he winked at me. Now, my sister Emma Lou had a cat. Its name was 530. It got the name because the cat used to come to our house every day at 530 to get something to eat. We didn't even know where the cat came from, but it would jump up on the windowsill and my mom would say, well, it must be 530 because here's the cat. Pretty soon, my sister claimed the cat was hers. She tried to change its name to Silver Queen for the kind of corn that my daddy grew. She called the cat Queenie, but the cat was 530 to the rest of us. Before 530 came along, we had a part collie named Babe who liked to dig holes anywhere and anytime she felt like it. If she was in the house and the mood hit her, she would try to dig a hole right down in the carpet. Now, Tornado was not a dog to just go around digging for the plur or pure pleasure of digging. If he dug a hole, it was because he needed it, and he took a lot of pride in the holes he dug. Now, one hot day, Tornado felt the need, and he went into the shade of those cut-off pine trees, and he dug a hole just the right size to lie in. And that's what he did. After that, in the heat of the day, he would go lie down in the hole and he would relax. He got it right the first time, like he did most things, and he never had to dig again. Well, one hot day he went to lie down and there was 530 in the hole. She was licking a little loose dirt off one paw. 530 looked at Tornado. Tornado looked at 530 and 530 yawned. There's a picture of Tornado facing off against 530. Tornado made a sound deep down in his throat that said, get out, please. And then he made another even deeper sound that just said, get out. But 530 did not budge. I would have tried to pick her up, but that cat didn't let anyone touch her except Emma Lou. I had scratches all over my arms to prove it. Well, I started walking to the pond and called, tornado, tornado, to follow me, you know? but he stayed where he was. And I called him over to the barn, tornado, tornado, but he didn't budge. He stayed right there looking at that cat in the hole and you guessed it. The cat stayed there until 5.30 came around. Then the cat got up, yawned, stretched and went up to the house. Tornado got right in the hole but not to lie down. He got in there to dig and he dug and he dug and he dug even more. Dirt flew everywhere. I knew just what he was doing. He was trying to get the feel and the smell and the memory of that cat out of his special place. I knew he couldn't. Even if he dug all the way down to China and he was already 12 inches on the way, when he got there, it would still be 5.30. Stop that dog, my mother cried from the kitchen window. What's gotten into him? 5.30, I called back. I didn't ask the time, she called. Get that dog out of there and fill in that hole. Well, I did what she told me. I knew I was doing Tornado a favor, but he didn't see that that way. I pulled him out by the collar and locked him in the shed. He struggled a lot on the way there. 
and he barked the whole time I was shoveling the dirt back in the hole. He took the loss of his lying down hole hard. He never, to my knowledge, went into those pine trees again. Not even when we went in there to cut down our Christmas tree, or our half a Christmas tree, I might say. As far as I know, Tornado never dug another hole. And every time 5.30 came around, Tornado would just look the other way. The next chapter is called Buddy, Chapter 6. See you next time.